This video is a little bit different by design. Consider it to be a PSA on automotive security and privacy. Now, if you are an owner of a modern car, this may help you if you're thinking about buying a car. If you run a car dealership or work at one, this may help enlighten you to user privacy and potential reducing your own liability. Same thing with the manufacturers. You may have thousands of pages of documents and procedures, but a lot of that may fall through the cracks when your product goes out in the wild. So this concept for this video started when I had a conversation with a 22 year old female who I know through a family member. And we were talking about like sharing content on social media and what you upload and what you don't and, and all of the usage of that. And it kind of is mind boggling because you have multiple generations that have grown up with phones in your hand, computer tablets. You understand where all this stuff goes, where all your data is, all that information is public. And you know this, and my question was, why do people overshare all their information from photos to now videos, even intimate details of their life through messaging apps that are also owned by these major social media corporations that are also free to you? And the reason a lot of this technology is free is because advertising IDs, data mining, selling your information, and then harvesting it even down to the point of logging keystrokes or logging what you're typing. And this is all getting stored on server infrastructure, cloud storage. And in many cases, most of the users of this don't have any idea how long it's being stored, where it's being stored. But data retention policies, disaster recovery policies mean that it could potentially be in the cloud or in storage for 10 to 20 years. That's a long time. And it's a long time for that data to be exploited and, and sifted through. So the question was, why do you put all of that information out there knowing it, that you have no control over what happens to it? And the answer was really simple. It was two things. One, we don't know as a generation how any of this stuff works. The second response was, we don't care. And I think in the United States especially, this is you can apply that mentality across a lot of disciplines, but basically over everything. And I can understand the not caring part because you get caught up in your life, either work, school, uh, you, you're a slave to the system of working to pay back student loans or working to get things and all of that. I get it. Family, you can make a million excuses why you don't care about every single thing. But the, the one that I don't particularly understand is we don't know how all of this works. And I'm not going to lie. It is complicated. Even working in this industry, I don't have a, a clear picture of why and how all of everything works. It's just impossible. And you get to a place where you're so inundated with everything that you just don't care. And they're connected to each other. They truly are connected. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you understood even half of how this stuff works, you would care because you would realize by not caring, you're going against your own best interests, not only for today, but in the future. You may ask, what the hell does this have to do with cars? And I understand. So here's a story. Back in a previous life, my corporate job had asked us all as a personal goal to figure out a way to save the company money. Big surprise. And if you were able to achieve this goal of cost reduction, you'd get a bonus. So it was kind of a win-win. So my plan was to do an energy consumption study on all of our equipment that was plugged into the wall. Thousands of devices to see how much energy and power they were consuming. I was shocked at the amount of legacy or old equipment, either test equipment or computers, that was still there in the wild, like 15-year-old computers plugged in. In some cases, they didn't even have working CPU fans or power supply fans, and somehow they were still operating properly. And the craziest things is a lot of those that were on a UPS hadn't been rebooted in six years. Can you imagine having your computer or your phone and never restarting it in that, a lot, that amount of time? So this is what I was discovering, along with the fact that they took up a lot of power compared, relative to some of the newer equipment. How is it that these devices were still operating 15 years later? And a lot of our new equipment was failing like nonstop. And as it turned out, all of this test equipment was supporting legacy devices where the software did not need to be updated. And most importantly, they were not plugged into the local area network or the internet. No Wi-Fi, no physical cable connection. And then it made sense why so many of these things were lasting forever. And then we realized, oh, they hadn't been backed up either. Nobody even knew about them, mostly. Only the people that worked on them every day, but they didn't care about backups. So I physically cloned the drives, and then I'm like, okay, we need to do some updates on these things. 
within five minutes of plugging that network cable in, the systems froze up, crashed, or never rebooted again. And that's because none of the software, the operating system was supported, the any security stuff on the computer was so archaic, or the software companies that we had or software that was on these computers no longer existed. The companies were out of business. So as soon as that thing hit the internet, all the port scanners started, all the malware was acting up like, oh, look at all these exploits, attacking this computer to the point where it just was completely unusable. After 15 years, all it took was a network cable to destroy it. So the point is, is you look at a lot of these older automobiles, right? I get in my old Honda. All I have to do is get in the car as long as it has a charged battery, some fuel in the tank, and a decent oil change, it's going to start and work. I don't have to worry about software at all. In fact, it doesn't even matter. Then we get to a newer car that had some connectivity, usually for like a concierge service, like, hey, uh, can you get me tickets to the ballet, which nobody ever does, or you get in a car accident, you hit the SOS button. That requires a cellular connection. In the case of my E92 M M3 or BMW, which was from 2013, they sent me a letter in the mail saying, we will pay you to come into the dealership to have your network connection disabled or your com box disabled because our cellular connectivity or that band that the, the internet connection was or the cellular connection was no longer supported. So that's kind of the middle ground, but the car still worked fine. I didn't need internet connection to use infotainment. But now when we look at all the new cars, that's where things get very interesting because like our Toyota Connected video, that entire infotainment was designed around hybrid connectivity, meaning connected to the internet all the time to download maps and updates, and then some local storage so you could still use it if a network connection dropped. But the core concept was always connected, and almost every single manufacturer is going the same way. Cloud storage, so your data goes up to the storage, so you can connect with this. You can see the state of your car, where it's at, turn it on and off, and that's a selling feature. But a part of that is once it leaves the dealer lot, the manufacturer's not making any more money off your car unless you're bringing it in for service. So now that they have a connected service or essentially an online computer in the car that they have to update, they're going to get residual money from you paying for these subscription services. That helps to pay their employees hundreds, if not thousands of employees to update it, add new features, to do security patches, to do over there updates to maybe fix even software or drivability problems with the car if they've enabled that. And that's great in this time period of this middle ground car that is very technology heavy. But here's where it gets complicated. In 10 years when this stuff no longer exists and the company has either moved on or been sold or their, their priorities change and they no longer want to, to support these older pieces of software that they have in cars, they kind of just leave it to die because you can't keep supporting this stuff until the end of time. So what this will do is it will allow backdoors for people to start to exploit these types of services. And because they're always connected to the internet, there's always a way. And you would think, well, you people would know if you're getting hacked. And if you spend five minutes doing any research on network security and seeing all of the ransomware, the hijacking, even like computer or student loan databases getting compromised, like these big companies, the biggest companies in the world can't even stay ahead of all of the exploits and hacks that are happening to them and your data, what's to think that some smaller car company is going to have the resources to protect your car and your data and your information like 15 years from now? And the scary part to me is, or in the case of like Stellantis, when they released their new version of Uconnect, which was Android Automotive, I asked, can the end user, when I buy a brand new car, can I turn off the network connection to the internet? Can I turn off my cellular connection through a menu? And they told me, no, it always has to be on. It's not even an option. And most car companies are, are treating this the same way. So what you have to do, unfortunately, is go and make sure that you understand what data you're sharing. What is it tracking? What are you doing? Are you using the app? Is that service active? And if you don't want it, don't subscribe to it. Make sure you uncheck the box during your subscription sign up. Uh, or in the case of Toyota, go to the portal and turn off all these things you don't want. So this BMW, I can pick up my phone and I can see where this car is at at any time with somebody driving it. Literally know exactly where this person's at. So if somebody borrows my car, oh, they're going to Arby's or they're going to the strip club. I can see that. It's always there. So you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's kind of neat. 
All right, what about my old Volvo? My old Volvo, their connected services allowed you to do a driving journal where you can see where the car was at point A to point B. Although you couldn't see it where it was at in real time, I could see every trip the car made during the day, up to 100 days. So I could see fuel economy. I could see how many miles was driven per trip. And the interesting part was when I sold that car back to the dealership, they tried to resell it as a certified used vehicle. So a Volvo dealership took it back in and they couldn't sell it. So then they sold it probably to auction to another dealer. Then that dealership sold it to a new new customer. And through all that process, nobody ever reset the infotainment. Nobody ever reset the security profile. So I'm still the registered owner of that car in terms of Volvo Connected. I can log in to my app and I can see every single place that new owner has gone. From the school their kids go to, to the church, to where they work, to where their house is, physical address, right in the driveway. I know everything about them. All I have to do is an address search, and I know exactly who lives there. And the scary thing is, is if the basics like that fall through the cracks, the dealership didn't reset it, the next dealership didn't reset it, the end user has no idea about any of this, and I'm sitting here in the background, just, I can look at it at any time and see what they're doing. Not only that, I've never had to reset my username and password on the Volvo side, that's a pretty big oversight. And this is just on the basic level. And if, if it falls through the cracks like that, what's to say that it wouldn't be easy for somebody to get into these databases to get simple credentials, to, to figure out advertiser IDs, to figure out user IDs, VIN numbers, addresses, to, to connect to these cars, maybe not today, maybe in five years, maybe when the security guard has been let down in terms of older product. As we know, the focus is always on new stuff. They don't care about older stuff. So it's about being educated. It's about understanding how some of this stuff works, caring about it for your own best interests, not having so much trust in the companies or the manufacturers or the dealerships or the, the, the people that you're working with, especially if it's free. Don't be giving out every single piece of your information and trusting that you're going to be safe. In America, we do not have privacy laws. In fact, it does favor a lot of these companies to ethically do with your data and things that they want. But the reality is on the back end, things like our ISPs can actively see where we go and they're, they're, it's okay to sell some of that data off. It's also okay for law enforcement to, to track advertiser IDs. There's all these loopholes in security, and it's really up to you to defend yourself against it. I'm not saying tech's bad. I'm not saying these companies are bad. But at the end of the day, nobody cares about you but you, and that's my point. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.